Hey, welcome back to Way of the Ranch and on today's very special episode, I'm going to be talking about all those little unique things that you need to know to be able to TIG weld aluminum properly, such as the material itself, why we use AC voltage, AC balance and how you adjust that. And we're even going to talk about balling your tungsten, how to do it and whether you actually need to do it these days or not. So if you are looking for a deeper understanding of TIG welding aluminum, stick around. We're going to talk about it now. So aluminum has some very unique characteristics. The first one is it is an excellent conductor of heat. And that's why they make things like heat sinks and radiators and automotive parts with cooling fins out of aluminum because they can get rid of the heat and transfer it away uh, rather quickly. And aluminum makes a very good chill block for when you're doing other kind of welding processes. Now it does this so well that when you take a TIG torch and try to focus some heat and start a puddle, you're going to find that you may not be able to even get a puddle going or it takes a very long time to start because that heat is getting pulled away and transferred throughout the part. Now the fix for this is that you have to increase the amperage hotter than you would when you're doing steel. So a good starting point is one amp for every thousandth of thickness of your material. So for example I've got some aluminum angle here it is one eighth of an inch thick so in decimal form that's 0.125 get rid of the decimal, that is 125 amps. That would be a good starting point. Now you may have to go up or down depending on a whole bunch of stuff, personal preference, your type of machine, the type of tungsten you're using, whether you have it pointed, blunted, or bald, it's all gonna change, but um, that's a good starting point to start with. So the next unique property for aluminum is that it does not rust. Now, when we compare this to steel, if we put a piece of steel outside and let oxygen get at it, it will oxidize it, which looks like rust to you and I. And over time, if we don't do anything about it, it will literally dissolve itself to nothing. Now, aluminum does not rust, but it does oxidize and it does something kind of slightly different. So raw aluminum, when it is exposed to the atmosphere, grows a very thin skin of something called aluminum oxide. And once it has fully covered the piece, this stops dissolving and corroding and it lasts a long time. So very cool. However, this creates a very unique problem when we try to go to weld it. Now aluminum roughly melts at 600 degrees Celsius. And yes, I said Celsius, I'm Canadian and I use the metric system sometimes. For you Americans, I will put it up in Fahrenheit as well. So the inside of my piece I'm going through TIG weld melts at 600 degrees Celsius. However, there is that thin coating of aluminum oxide and it does not melt until it gets to 2000 degrees Celsius. That's roughly three times the temperature needed to break through that. So there's gonna be a problem here. When I go to make my puddle, the top surface is gonna to be totally solid and no puddle yet, yet everything underneath is turning into a liquid flowing goopy mess. And even if I put a filler rod in there, it's just gonna ball up on top because there's no puddle formed yet and it'll look like garbage too. So we have to have some way of getting rid or cleaning off that aluminum oxide. Now, the best thing you can do to prep your materials before you start is get a stainless steel wire brush. Make sure you only use it for aluminum and you can very aggressively score or scratch up the surface to try to get rid of as much of that aluminum oxide as possible. However, there still is something else required and now we have to talk about why we use AC voltage. All right, rather than me just going over the TIG welder and showing you it has to be on AC voltage and saying you gotta have it on AC when welding aluminum, which you do, I thought it would be really beneficial for you guys to really understand what's happening by showing you what happens when you weld aluminum with DC negative. Take a look at what happens, flip it over to DC positive with welding aluminum and see what happens and using that information to get you to really understand why we actually need that AC voltage and going forward, what the AC balance control can do for us. Here we go, DC negative, which is the wrong setting for aluminum. Let's see what happens and we'll talk about it after. Okay, not getting a puddle, but something weird's happening. It seems like it's kind of going like a film on top. I still don't have a puddle. Lots of heat going on, but there's no puddle. What's, I'll try putting some rod on it. Oh, it, oh, what the? 
Right now, taking a look at it, you saw that I had a very hard time making a puddle. In fact, it never actually appeared. However, the surface started to go wrinkly, kind of like a film on the top of gravy. And that was that aluminum oxide that does not want to get melted yet. However, there's lots of heat going in. So DC negative, all the heat is going into the material. And so the inside that's melting at 600 degrees Celsius literally started to melt and sag and fall away from me. And even when I took some aluminum and started adding it with my filler rod, it did not want to stick. It just balled up because there's a lot of aluminum oxide going on it as well. And uh, no puddles, so no welding. So the good things, we can put a lot of heat into the material. However, there is zero cleaning action happening here and the oxides are not coming off, so we can't penetrate it, we can't weld. It's something to note with this DC negative setting, you were putting all of the heat down into the material and that means there's actually kind of a cooling action that's happening on this tungsten electrode. So it, because of that, if you take a look, there's still a blunted sharpened point there and there's no balling happening because that electrode is just not getting hot enough. So that was DC negative. Let's flip it to DC positive and see what happens there. So this is DC positive, so we're going to see what happens and we're going to talk about it after. However, I am going to give you a little hint. Keep an eye on that electrode because it's going to happen pretty quick. Oh, there it goes. Ew, we literally have tungsten put right into that aluminum weld. Yuck. Now with DC positive, you were having all of the electricity coming up from the aluminum material and going into the tungsten electrode, which explains why within seconds this got too hot, melted, and exploded on us. Now there is something positive that's going on at the same time though. When the electricity is jumping off the aluminum material, it's actually breaking or cleaning off chunks of aluminum oxide from the surface and exposing the raw aluminum underneath so that we can weld it. Now, if only there was some way that we could combine the cleaning action of DC positive with the electrode cooling and penetration heat needed in DC negative. Hmm. Well, that's what AC is about, so let's talk about that. Now, when you set your machine to AC, what you're doing is you're putting it to alternating current, which means the voltage, instead of being positive or negative, actually alternates from positive to negative, and it does that in a sine wave kind of shape. Now, when it's up in the positive, we're getting cleaning action from our aluminum, but we are heating up the tungsten. Then it goes down, it goes into the negative part of the sine wave, and now we are getting the heat to go down into our material and having some good penetration, and at the same time, we're getting a cooling effect on our tungsten. And then the whole process just repeats steadily. Now, it keeps repeating or alternating, and how fast that repeats per second is something called frequency, and the unit of measurement is the hertz. So for example, a one hertz frequency would be that the voltage is starting at the zero line, going up in the positive, coming down into the negative, and getting back to zero voltage, and it took one second. That would be one hertz. Now why I'm talking about this in such great detail is the fact that when they invented TIG welding AC aluminum back in the day, they did not have very complicated machines and not a lot of control over that AC voltage. In fact, all they had was what was ever coming out of the wall at that point. So here in Canada, that hasn't changed. This is 60 hertz uh, frequency still. Now, that allowed us to be able to weld aluminum, but there was some drawbacks. So let's get into that and start talking about the actual tungsten itself. Now, with our AC frequency being 60 hertz and no ability to be able to adjust how much was positive or negative, technically we were able to weld aluminum, but we still had a problem where 50% of the cycle was cleaning the metal and throwing all the heat up into the electrode, which was melting everything up. So they solved that by switching up to pure 100% tungsten electrodes, which are identified with the green paint. Now, at that time period, these were the highest melting point metals that could be used as electrodes. And they did the trick, however, not fully. So remember, we still got 50% of the heat and cleaning action going on, and it's still too much. So even though you did a nice sharp pointed electrode or even blunted it, and you start your welding, very quickly there was still too much heat and that sharp point would start to melt up and form a ball on the end. And that's where we hear the term bald tungsten. 
And the reason why most people will tell you that you have to ball your tungsten dates all the way back from this, that it was going to happen anyway, so you might as well start with a scrap piece of aluminum and ball your tungsten. That way you have a nice stable arc and nothing's gonna change as you continue on. All right, the next big question is, do you still need to ball your tungsten nowadays? And the answer is still not 100% yes or no, because there is a ton of factors that affect this decision such as what is the amperage that you're running on your machine? What is the diameter of your electrodes? Personal preference, maybe there's something you've been doing for 20, 30 years and you don't really wanna change and you're doing well. Uh, the other things are technological advancements over the last 30, 40 years. So things like your choice of electrodes. If you have green 100% pure tungsten, you may still wanna ball your tungsten. However, there are new alloys with tungsten that they've made, such as 2% seriated, 2% lanthanated, uh, other rare earth electrodes that have a higher melting point, and so they don't suffer from that balling on the end of the tungsten as much. Now, the other thing is the machine itself. If you've got a 40, 50 year old machine, you may not have a lot of choice and you're gonna have to ball your tungsten. However, if you've got a newer machine, that has something called AC balance control, then that allows you to adjust not only usually the frequency, but also the percentage of how much is positive and negative. So now we can change from 50% positive, 50% negative, we can go down to maybe 30% positive, 70% negative so that we get that cleaning action, but it's still not melting up our electrode and causing it to ball up. So let me show you on my machine. Now on this Lincoln Electric 225 Precision TIG, there is not a ton of choices and buttons and options on here, which is great for my students when they're trying to learn. However, there's enough here to do the job really nicely. So we've got our AC balance right here, and there is a green setting here where the light pops up and it says it's auto. So if you are learning how to do AC TIG welding aluminum, I'd recommend putting it on that setting and then once you get a handle on it, then you can maybe mess around with the cleaning and penetration. Now on my machine, you can go one way all the way to maximum cleaning, which on this one is 60% positive, 40% negative, and then you can scale it all the way down to the opposite end, which is 80% negative, 20% positive. So like I said, if you're finding that you need to change it because you're getting too much of one of the other, then you can adjust it this way. Uh, however, like I said, I think I would leave it on auto for most people in most situations. Now this knob here adjusts something called pulse frequency, and it is different than the frequency that we are getting for our AC voltage. What this is, is it pulses from very low amperage to your maximum amperage that you've set here, and how many times per second. So think of this as kind of like a way of scaling down the heat, uh, yet pulsing it so that it can get very, very hot and penetrate, and then back off so that you don't melt through. So this can be adjusted from off or up to a maximum of 20 hertz. And on this machine, there's a little light to kind of give you a reference of how it looks like when it's doing the welding. So a very low frequency, you can see that you can almost time your dipping of your filler rod and this will help you make a better weld as well. Now that we've talked about balling your tungsten, I'm gonna show you a couple ways that you can ball your tungsten on your electrodes depending on what machine you have. All right, depending on your machine, there's gonna be some different ways of doing this. Now let's pretend that this is an older machine that does not have balance control. In that case, you have a quick option and a slower option to be able to ball your tungsten. First one, the quick one, is shut it off and you are going to put this on DC positive. Now we already know that this is going to explode our electrodes. So don't go too high with the amperage, maybe 40, 50, 60 amps, you have to play with your machine and you're going to go for maybe half a second or a second and you're going to keep a very very close eye to the tungsten as you are holding it about one eighth of an inch up from a piece of aluminum or copper and and just until you see that ball forming on the end and then you're going to stop okay now the slower way 
if we shut this off and we go back to AC and you don't have balance control, you already have that 50% positive voltage, which is going to be a little bit too much. So if you hold your electrode about one eighth of an inch from a piece of aluminum or copper and you hold it there and try to just weld for about a minute or two, as you start to weld, it'll start to ball up on its own. With the quick method on DC positive, I turned the amps down to about 45, 50 amps so that it wouldn't just disintegrate on me. And it took a couple seconds. And you can see I did not make a ball the size of the diameter. I find that I get a little bit better control and a tighter arc cone if I leave some of the taper there. Now, if you've got a machine that has balance control, it's really quite easy. Set your machine to AC and turn the balance control all the way to the maximum cleaning that this machine can do, which in this case is 60% positive, 40% negative. And then stick your tungsten electrode one eighth of an inch up from a piece of scrap aluminum or copper. And you're going to simply weld for a minute or two. And as you are welding, you will start to see that the end of the electrode starts to ball. And you simply just stop when you get the size of the ball that you want on the end of your electrode. Now you can see that when I ball my tungsten, I do not make the ball on the end as big as the diameter of the electrode. I want to have a little bit of that tapered part that helps me have a more focused cone and more focused heat when I'm doing my aluminum welding. Now, if you want a bigger ball on the end of your tungsten, you just have to go a little bit longer with that cleaning cycle maxed out so that it forms up for you. Right, that's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench. Hopefully this video was able to give you a deeper understanding of what you are actually trying to do when you are TIG welding aluminum. Now, for those of you out there that want a very cut and clear step-by-step -step how to weld aluminum video, stay tuned. I'm going to be making one of those. And on the end of that one, I'm going to tag on a segment on troubleshooting your aluminum welds because there is a lot more stuff going on with aluminum, especially with the aluminum oxide and settings and AC balance and all of that good stuff. If you have any questions about this video, put them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I will try to help you out as much as possible as well. And if you haven't already, why don't you join us on our Instagram and that way you can see what's going on around the shop in between videos. Till next time, take it easy.